Hello boys and girls, it's Auntie Mimi here and today I've got another story for you. Today's book is Postman Pat and the book's called Postman Pat's Difficult Day. Sounds fun, doesn't it? So sit back, get comfortable and let's begin. It was a lovely morning in Greendale. The sun was shining the birds were singing. Where was Postman Pat? It was long past his time to be up and on his way, but his curtains were closed and his van stood outside. All was silent and still. Then the door opened and Pat looked out. He looked sleepily at his watch. Oh dear, is that the time? He dressed and rushed out without any breakfast and without his hat. He dashed back for his hat, fell over his cat and landed in a heap on the doorstep. He picked Jess up and ran to his van, saying, Come on, let's get moving, Jess. We're ever so late. He talked to Jess as they drove along the winding roads. What a start to the day. I wonder why my blooming alarm clock didn't go off. We'll have to see if Ted can mend it. Mrs Goggins was having a difficult morning too. She was trying to mend a parcel. It was for Ted Glenn. When Pat arrived, he tried to help, but they got all tangled up in the sticky tape. What a muddle. I do wish people would wrap parcels properly, said Mrs Goggins. This is in a right old mess, and heavy too. I don't know what Ted will say. It's just one of those days, said Pat. First I slept in, because my alarm clock didn't go off. Then this parcel. Never mind, it's a lovely morning. Cheerio! Pat was on his way. He saw Ted mending a fence on the hillside. Hello, he said. There's Ted. I'll give him his parcel before it falls to bits. He stopped and shouted to Ted. Hi, Ted. There's a parcel for you. Ted came down the hill. Pat passed the parcel to him over the wall. He was just saying, be careful, Ted, as it's a bit loose when, oops, it slipped and Ted dropped it. Oh, no. Dozens of little balls and wheels and screws rolled around in the grass. Ted, on his hands and knees, began to scratch and search for them. Nay, he said, I'll never find them in this long grass. Hold on, said Pat, climbing over the wall. I'll give you a hand. It's hopeless, said Ted. When Bill Thompson saw them, he came over to see what they were doing. I have just the thing, he said. It was a large magnet. It picked up all the wheels and balls and screws from the grass. I hope they're all there, said Pat. I'll count them, said Ted. Thanks. Cheerio, Ted. Cheerio, Pat. Ted said thanks to Bill. That was really handy. Pat's next stop was at Thompson Ground. Alf was up a ladder, mending a barn wall. Pat was just walking under the ladder when Alf shouted, Look out! Too late. Oh, ouch, said Pat. Half had dropped his tin of nails. Pat tried to catch it, twisted round, lost his balance and sat down with a bump. With his hand twisted under him, Half came down the ladder. You all right, Pat? No, I think I've sprained my wrist. I'll go and get a bandage, said Alf. Then Mrs Thompson came along. Dear me, whatever have you been up to, Pat? 
Just in too much of a hurry, said Pat, walking under ladders. Mrs Thompson looked at his wrist. Now hold still, she said, and I'll bind it up for you. But you won't be able to drive any more today, you know? You'll have to rest it. What about all my letters, said Pat? Sam Waldron arrived at the mobile shop. They told him about Pat's accident. Why don't you put your letters and parcels in my van, said Sam. We can do rounds together. And the post will get through after all, said Pat. Thanks, Sam. It's a grand idea. Everyone helped to move the parcels and letters into Sam's van. There's plenty of room, said Sam. Just stack them at the back of the van, behind the seats. Come on, Jess, said Mrs Thompson. She put Jess on the seat. You'll be all right in there. Pat climbed in beside Sam and Jess curled up on his knee. Off we go, said Sam. Away they went. What a surprise everyone will get when they see us together, said Pat. And so they did. Pat's hand was still hurting, so they made their first stop at Dr Gilbertson's house. She had a good look at his hand and said, It's not broken. You'll be all right in a day or two. I'll just give you something to soothe it. She gave him a jar of cream that took the pain away. Thank you, Doctor, said Pat. Cheerio. On they went to Greendale Farm. What a good idea, said Mrs Pottage when she saw them. We can get our post and parcels with our potatoes and peas. All of the people of Greendale agreed with her as Pat and Sam went on their way. The Reverend Timms, Miss Hubbard, Granny Dryden, George Lancaster, Peter Fogg and all the children. Just like Sam's van too because the smell of fish tickled his nose. At the end of the day, Sam gave Jess a kipper all to himself, and that turned a difficult day into a perfect day, as far as Jess was concerned. Well, that was a wonderful story, wasn't it? It was a very bad day for Postman Pat, but all his friends in the end helped him, didn't they? I hope you enjoyed that book, boys and girls. As always, I want you to be kind to one another. I want you to look after yourselves. And I want you to try to be happy every single day. Until next time, bye-bye.